Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Bande Ham Shiguro Shiuta Padakamalam Shigarun Vaishnavam Scha Si Rupam Sagrajatam Sahaganat Raganatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Bitam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinavandu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanjana Gaudan Ghi Radhe Vrindavane Swari Vrishabhanu Dhuti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Vatitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nittananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai, Nara Damodar Ki Jai, Damodar Manth Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So uh, I think I was requested, or not requested, but ordered. <laughs> practically the same <laughs> to speak a little bit about Dhammadar. Um, it is quite a lengthy and very detailed pastime. So we'll try to say something that will maybe be interesting for the devotees. Um, this month is called, you know, uh, Kartik Dhammadar. It's also Radharani's month. It's called Ujay, Ujayswari. She is also known as Ujayswari for this particular month. As the next month, which is November, December, generally in the normal year, is the month of Magashirsha, and that is the month of Krishna. So before the month of Krishna appears, the month of Radharani is known as the, the month of Damodar also. So uh, we honor Srimati Radharani in this month as being her month, but then we worship the Lord in his form as a baby, as Sri Damodar. Damo Dara means Damo, means rope, and Dara means around, one who is bound by the ropes of affection from his mother. Um, Ooh, where to start? It's really quite a gigantic mountain to to scale. <laughs> but we'll start from somewhere. Um, Krishna has many, many names, and each of the names are characteristics of his qualities and activities. Um, we get a little insight in Krishna's nature when we hear about his particular names. The names given to him by his devotees or given to him by his characteristics and his qualities that are exhibited in his particular pastimes. So one of the names that is very really dear to the devotees is Makan Cho. Uh, Makan means butter, and Cho means thief, <laughs> the butter thief. So Krishna is also known as a thief. A thief is not a person that is so much, what we say, respected or even allowed in normal circles, but a thief is a person who is doing the wrong thing and is punishable. But Krishna takes on the, the, the title of a butter thief, and uh, he is glorified for that. Mm, the contradiction in terms is that uh, a thief is someone, someone who steals someone else's property. But Krishna can't steal anyone's property because everything belongs to him. So whatever he steals, he doesn't steal. He's just using his own property. But it appears to be <laughs> that he should be locked up and, 
and punished for at least six months in jail without parole. <laughs> so that's Krishna. He likes to perform activities that are very exciting for his devotees. As a child, we see children who are they're mischievous. The mischievous nature of a child is an indication of the intelligence of a child. The Prabhupada also mentions that when a child is mischievous, it's an, an indication of intelligence. Uh, and of course, there are also other great souls who are children who don't exhibit that mischievousness, but they are more like in samadhi. <laughs> Those, are, those children are quite rare, <laughs> such as tomorrow is the disappearance day of Naratam Das Thakur. And he was not a mischievous child. He was a very uh, meditative child. <laughs> but for Krishna, mischievousness is his characteristic. And he enjoys being mischievous. And those who are around him during his mischievous activities find great happiness, although they don't appear to be happy. <laughs> It's interesting because in the material world you're either happy or not. But in the spiritual world you can be appear to be miserable but you can be really happy at the same time. <laughs> so those who are being victimized by Krishna's th thievery are actually very happy, <laughs> although they may complain. <laughs> so Krishna, he liked to steal butter and his mother couldn't understand why. His parents had so many cows, and uh, still he was getting nice milk and butter, and milk products, but still he would go to the homes of other gopis, especially there was one gopi named Padmavati. She had very special butter, and Krishna would like to steal that butter. That's another story. <laughs> we'll tell that. Uh, but Mother Yasoda became concerned. And so this particular day, um, where the pastime unfolds, is a special day also. It's the Diwali day. Hmm. So Krishna stole butter on Diwali day. And it's five days of ceremonies that are sent around Diwali. And the third day, or the middle day, between the five, is the day of ceremonies honoring the appearance of Lord Ram back to his kingdom in Ayodhya. So the Bhagavatam explains, and the Acharyas also give commentary, that this day is the day that Krishna stole the butter. <laughs> so it just so happens that Mother Yasoda um, was there, and Nanda Maharaj had gone for one ceremony, and um, uh, Rohini and her child Balaram were also gone that day. Usually Rohini is always with Mother Yasoda, because they are like inseparable and of course Krishna and Balaram are inseparable but this day Rohini wanted to celebrate the Diwali day at the house of Upananda uh, Nanda Maharaj had five four other brothers uh, named Upananda Sunanda Nanda Nandana and one more he was Nanda and then there's one more so uh, Upananda was the senior of all of them. Actually, he was meant to become the leader of the cowherd men in Vrindavan. But because Nanda Maharaj exhibited such saintly and glorious qualities, Upananda deferred the rule to Nanda Maharaj. So that's how I, it says that Nanda Maharaj was the king of Vrindavan. Although Upananda was the older brother and was meant to be in that position. Well, this shows Vaishnav culture that um, there's no envy, no enmity, no uh, trying to vibe for position to get some prestige or some, some material gain. That Upananda could see that Nanda, his younger brother, who was the third of the five brothers, was more qualified in, in all respect. So he deferred everything to Nanda. And Nanda accepted that and became the, what we say, the king of Raj, <laughs> like that. And Mother Yasoda was the queen, <laughs> like that. She was considered to be Queen Yasoda. 
not just Mother Yasoda or Lady Yasoda. She was actually a queen in all respects. So that day, Rohini had taken her son Balaram to Upananda's house for a ceremony, and many of the maid servants that assisted Mother Yasoda were gone that day, except one maid servant. She stayed back. So that day, it's described how the day unfolds, where it begins, where uh, Mother Yasoda is waking up from her rest, and Krishna is lying next to her fast asleep. It's a very beautiful say, scene as it's described by the Acharyas in the sense that we see how much love Mother Yasoda had for Krishna. She was constantly thinking of him and constantly acting in such a way that whatever she did was for his pleasure. Um, there are many, many descriptions of how her mood of love was defined. She would say that was that he is my beautiful blue lotus or my sapphire gem. She would call him that. So Krishna was fast asleep next to his mother and his mother wake, woke up. So very carefully not to wake him up seeing that she he was still resting. She removed herself from the bed and started to prepare herself to get ready for the day's activities. So there was one maid servant there who was meant to assist her to make sure the bath water was just right and all her clothes were ready to go, ornaments and so many other things. But somehow or other, uh, Mother Yasoda on this particular day, she realized that now I am gonna do everything for Krishna. Usually she got help from the maid servants, but today she wanted to do everything for Krishna just to show her love for Krishna. And so, uh, when the maid servant was assisting her in her bath and for whatever else she needed, Malya Soda kept saying, hurry up, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> Come on, you're going too slow. <laughs> so the maid servant was trying to do her best to assist, but Malya Soda was very eager to finish so she could get to her chores. Finally, it's described in very great detail how she took her bath and received her clothes and then she was ornamented so nicely. And then she decided to begin her day's activities. At the same time, she would look over to Krishna and see if he was ready to wake up. But every time she looked, she saw he was still fast asleep. And so now she, she thought, well, you know, Krishna, he's always going to steal uh, butter from other houses, milk products and so many things. So I'm going to make the best butter possible. So Maharaj Nanda had how many thousand cows? 900,000 cows. Hmm, that's almost one million cows. 900,000. Now, how big is Mathura Vrindavan? It's 32 square miles if you measure it by, by geography. So 900,000 cows. And then there was also 1 billion gopis. 3 billion gopis, I'm sorry. And there's, there was 1 billion cowherd boys. So in the area of 32 square miles. Now you try to use your material calculations thinking maybe we can stack everybody on top of each other. <laughs> but it wasn't possible. But Krishna, by his inconceivable potency, expanded this Vrindavan to accommodate everything. And therefore, everything looked normal, but still, there was that many residents. So out of the 900,000 cows, they decided, you know, we're going to make, we're going to have the best butter, best milk, best everything for Krishna. So they, they took the best 1,000 cows and milked those cows and then took the milk of those 1,000 cows and fed it to the best 100 cows. And from the milk of the best 100 cows, they fed it to the best 10 cows. 
And from the milk of the best 10 cows, they found this one cow who was the best of all cows. The cow's name was Padma Gandha. Padma means lotus and Gandha means fragrance, fragrant like a lotus flower. <laughs> so, was, so they took that milk and gave it to that one cow. And that milk, when it was in the bucket, used to permeate the whole area with such a sweet aroma that everyone would think, wow, what is that? Can you imagine milk like that? It's not milk, it's actually pure ambrosio nectar. So that was the milk they said is for Krishna only. So Mother Yusoda took that milk and of course, the thing is, is, she put it on the stove to boil. <laughs> now, she also took part of that milk and was going to churn. Uh, she had actually made some yogurt from the milk the day before. Because that's how they used to make butter in those days. Um, when I first started my Krishna conscious career, <laughs> career, yeah. I'm still working on my career. <laughs> it's not really going any place. <laughs> I'm not going to change careers because there's nothing else optional. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but uh, uh, that was my first service ever to change, turn butter. So uh, the devotees in the barn in Nuvrindavan would milk the cows and they would bring me the milk. And then my duty was to churn the milk, first separate the cream from the milk, and give the milk to the different departments, and then take the cream and churn it into butter. And I had this bucket, actually it was a metal container, and then I had this long stick with a rounded bottom, which had holes all the way around the circumference of that like round thing, there was holes in it, and then there was a stick. And that's how I would churn butter. So they, we made butter from cream. But that's not the actual tradition, how to make it. You make it from yogurt. Yeah. So after making yogurt, Mother Yasoda put the yogurt in a pot, and then she had the churning rod, and then she would tie ropes to the stick of the churning rod, and in that way she would churn. So it was like this. I used to go like this. <laughs> A little different, I guess it's the modern way to do things. So now, she's thinking, you know, all these maidservants, they're useless. <laughs> so I'm gonna make butter for Krishna today. It'll be very special. And that way he'll like it so much he won't go to other houses and steal. <laughs> okay. So, now Mother Yasoda, she's absorbed in Krishna. So she can't stop thinking about Krishna. In fact, every once in a while while she's churning, she's looking towards the area where Krishna is sleeping just to see if he's waking up or not. And she wants to do everything nicely not to wake him up, but at the same time, she's eager to churn butter. And now, she's, uh, while she's ch beginning to churn butter, she's thinking, hmm, boy, Krishna, he is such a naughty person. And he's always giving, although he's the king of all the cowherd boys, he's also always giving the gopis a difficult time, <laughs> the older gopis. If you read some of the slokas written by Srila Rupa Goswami about Krishna's pastimes with the older gopis, uh, you'll be quite amazed <laughs> how Krishna used to tease the older gopis all the time. He would tease everybody. <laughs> but that was his way of showing love for the devotees. So now, the milk is on the stove, and she's decided, okay, I'm gonna make butter. So swish, 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 swish. Now she's got earrings, she's got bangles on her. She's sitting on a chokey, a little, kind of like, 
wooden stool and she's churning the butter. Mother Yasoda, is, she has very big breasts, but her hips, are, but her waist is very slender. And so, and but so, and she's now she's she's churning. But she's singing the glories of Krishna while she's churning. And there's a beautiful, beautiful prayers that are mentioned of how she's thinking of Krishna's pastimes while she's churning butter. And every once in a while, she always looks over to see if Krishna is waking up or not. So now she's churning, swish, 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 swish. And then all of a sudden, Krishna wakes up. And then he gets up. Now his eyes are half closed. And he sees his mother but then when she looks at him, he closes his eyes again. He doesn't want her to see him looking at her. So and then he closes his eyes and she thinks, well, he's still sleepy yet. And then she goes back to churning and then he opens his eyes again. And then she looks over again and Krishna again closes his eyes. <laughs> so now this is going on. Now she's churning and she's getting absorbed in glorifying Krishna with these beautiful slokas which have come out in the form of songs. And now these songs, these were not just songs that were sung, these were songs she composed with her out of her own bhakti for Krishna. Beautiful, beautiful songs. Now Krishna's watching his mother and he's starting to watch her and he's experiencing the love that she's exhibiting for him. And he's watching, and he's thinking, should I go over there? He wants to go over there and jump in her lap and just be with her, but then he thinks, I want to watch her. <laughs> so he's watching, and he's enjoying the love that she's feeling for him in himself. This is interesting. She, he, when someone loves you, and you can experience that love. Sometimes you think about the love that, they're ex that they have for you within your own self. And in that, in that absorption of their love within your own self, you're feeling the happiness of that love. So that was Krishna. He's, he's feeling the happiness of the mother, his mother's love for him within him, his own self as he's watching her churn butter. Then Krishna's thinking, boy, these uh, she has earrings on, and these earrings are so close to her face. Boy, you know, those earrings are really, really fortunate. Boy, I don't get the same amount of affection as those earrings get. And this is Krishna's meditation. So then he's watching and watching. Now she's singing. And she's also perspiring because it was difficult for her to churn the butter. She was not accustomed to doing this service, but she was doing it today just to please Krishna. So she's getting tired and she's working very hard, but she doesn't care. She's not thinking, oh, I'm so tired, I'm just going to stop. No, this is for Krishna. So devotees can also sometimes experience that, that when we're doing something for Krishna, we forget about how we feel, whether we feel good or tired or in whatever way we feel, we just get absorbed in the service. And whatever ex whatever we're experiencing on the physical level loses its uh, importance. We don't even, re even notice it. So she was absorbed in singing the glories of the Lord and churning butter. Of course, she's perspiring glorifying Krishna and at the same time her love is so strong that the milk is coming out of her breasts automatically because she's thinking of the Krishna with such love it says that the the love for a mother for a child is the milk that the mother has in her breasts for the child that is known as uh, it's the mother's love so she was feeling so much love that that milk was actually pouring out of her breasts. And Krishna was watching all this. 
And Krishna is just absorbed. Now every time she goes to look at him, he closes his eyes like he's not, you know. So finally, this is going on for some time. And then Krishna says, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> He wants to go over there and, and be with her, but at the same time, he wants to watch her in her devotional, uh, as she's singing the songs and showing her love for Krishna. So Krishna is meditating on her, but at the same time, so there's two different types of bhakti. There's bhakti in separation and bhakti in meeting. So in order to enhance the meeting, separation is actually an element of greater intensity. As the intensity of separation increases, the anticipation of meeting also increases. And in that anticipation, um, the happiness that comes with that meeting becomes greater and greater due to the element of separation. <laughs> That's why it says that the element of separation is actually stronger than the element of meeting because it creates such a happiness within oneself that one is longing to be with the beloved. So in the same way, Krishna was experiencing his own separation from his mother. <laughs> Interesting. As he's watching her uh, churn the butter like that. So finally Krishna can't take it anymore. <laughs> and his love for his mother, wants, he wants to experience it. So then he opens his eyes, and then he comes coming, comes over to his mother and sits in her lap. Immediately, she becomes, she's half there and half not at first. She's absorbed in Krishna internally, in the mood of loving Krishna by singing about Krishna and serving Krishna. But now Krishna personally comes, and now she breaks out of her internal mood into the external mood. And now she sees Krishna and Krishna jumps on her lap and she immediately offers her breast milk to Krishna. And she stops her journey. So now she's there and Krishna is there and Krishna is enjoying being with his mother immensely. Such loving relationships. Then what happens now, the milk that was on the stove decided to uh, commit suicide. Uh, this is Jiva Goswami's in, uh, uh, commentary, that the milk that was boiling on the stove now started to think, oh no, Krishna has so much love for his mother and his mother has so much love for him and because she has unlimited love, she has unlimited milk. So what is the use of me? This, the, the milk was thinking like that. So the milk decided to commit suicide. Jai. Jai. So the milk start boiling over. <coughs> and hitting the stove. And now, Mother Yasoda is thinking, oh, the milk is boiling over. And she puts Krishna down. Oh, and goes to check out the milk to make sure it's okay. Why did she do that? She's with Krishna. But we see the example that that milk was for Krishna. And she's thinking, I have to make nice milk products for Krishna from that milk. So that milk should be taken care of. So she goes to take care of the milk. Now Krishna's all alone and he's thinking, where did my mother go? <laughs> she was just here and now he becomes angry. <laughs> and he decides to show his anger. So he runs into the other next room. He finds a rock and takes the rock and throws it and breaks the butter pot that's hanging from the rafters. Now the butter pot's broken on the bottom and the butter is starting to fall out. But Krishna, for some reason, he push, pushes this really heavy grinding mortar underneath the pot 
and he stands on the grinding motor and he reaches up and starts grabbing the butter. Now he's grabbing the butter and guess who comes? Hmm? Monkeys. Headed by the the leader of the monkey, what's his name? Dahi Loba. <laughs> dahi 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 Loba. Dahi means yogurt and loba means greed. <laughs> So he, li he likes yogurt. <laughs> He's greedy for yogurt. <laughs> so he comes with all his monkey friends. And then he starts, Krishna is really happy to see the monkeys. So he starts giving the monkeys all kinds of butter. And there are more monkeys are coming. So more butter is going out. <laughs> and uh, so this pastime, as we mentioned, happened on the Diwali day. Why? Because Krishna wanted to reciprocate that the love that the monkeys did when he was in his incarnation as Lord Ramchandra. So therefore, on that day, he distributed butter to the monkeys just to show his appreciation for the monkeys who served him when he was in his incarnation of Lord Ramchandra. So this is the commentary of the charyas. And now, um, he's eating the butter, and Mother Yasoda, after taking care of the milk, she comes back, and then Krishna's gone. Where did he go? He's not here. Then she looks, and she sees all this butter everywhere in a place. She looks down, and there's butter prints on the floor. <laughs> and she's thinking, where, where is he? He's making a mess. And she runs, and she goes into the next room, and Krishna is still distributing butter to the monkeys. As soon as Mother Yasoda comes in, the monkeys run. <laughs> now Krishna becomes frightened, and he's looking this way and that way. When he sees his mother, he thinks, oh, what am I going to do? So she picks up a stick. She happens to find a stick laying nearby. And now she wants to, she doesn't want to hit him, but she wants to scare him. Now, you're a mischievous child. And therefore, you should be controlled. So Krishna doesn't like to be controlled. He's God. <laughs> he controls everybody. <laughs> Nobody controls him. <laughs> but he's controlled by love. So that's the only power that works. And so Mother Yasoda picks up a stick, and Krishna jumps down from the grinding mortar and decides to make his getaway. <laughs> now, she's coming after him with a stick, and she's running. Now, Krishna's fast, and Mother Yasoda, she's just pretty good for her size, although she has big breasts, she has big breasts and big hips. She's trying to run, but still, she can't catch Krishna. And Krishna's running. Now, this is an interesting little uh, notation by the Acharyas, that Krishna is running in fear. Now, it says in the Bhagavatam, fear personified is afraid of Krishna. The wind blows out of fear of me. Uh, the death takes its toll out of fear of me. There, there are verses like that describing that all the elements in creation are under the power of Krishna's fearful energy. And therefore, they do their service. So now, that same person who creates fear in everybody is afraid of his mother. So now, when she's running, now the ladies in those days, I don't know what happened to the ladies nowadays, but ladies in those days used to wear flowers in their hair all the time. And so, Mother Yasoda, she had a nice decoration of flowers in their hair. And now while she's running, the flowers start discussing. Hmm. Who is this Mother Yasoda who we're sitting on her head? She's running after the Supreme Lord, and he's running in fear. Boy, she must be a great personality. What are we doing on her head? We should be at her feet. So they start falling off her head onto the floor. This is Jiva Goswami again. <laughs> So now, Krishna's running in fear. Some acharyas, or some commentators, not necessarily acharyas, say that Krishna was 
feigning fear. That means he was acting like he was fearful, but he was actually fearful. That is, was his mood because his, he has so much love for his mother and in the role of a, of a little child, he's afraid of his mother who is about to punish him. So now he's running, 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 and uh, she's running after him. And uh, of course it says in the Dhammadarastika prayer, she ran with greater speed. <laughs> but we doubt that. <laughs> Krishna saw that his mother was getting tired, so he slowed down. And then she caught him. And she was thinking, now I caught him. I have so many chores to do. And how am I going to do my chores? He's making such a mess. I won't be able to do any work. And it's not like she wanted to do her chores, but her chores were for Krishna. Everything she did for Krishna. So she was thinking, how can I serve Krishna nicely if Krishna is making a mess? <laughs> so she decided, I think I should tie him up. Now it's interesting because Nanda Maharaj wasn't there. Rohini wasn't there. Many of the cowherd ladies, nobody was there that day. Everyone would have been, not, not, the, not the cowherd ladies, but, but Nanda Maharaj, Rohini, and other senior persons would have immediately objected to Mother Yusoda tying up Krishna. But because they weren't there, this pastime was enacted. So now she caught him, and she's thinking, you know that grinding mortar? He helped Krishna steal, so he should be tied up too. So she tied the ropes around the grinding mortar, and then she tried to tie that same rope around Krishna's belly. But she was two inches too short. So she managed to grab another piece of rope and tie it to the first rope. And again, she wrapped it around Krishna. And guess what? Two inches too short. Took another piece of rope, did the same. Again, two inches too short. Finally, things started to spread in the area of the village. And some of the other ladies came hearing something was happening. And they saw Mother Yasoda. So they all started to get ropes and give Mother Yasoda different color ropes. Ropes for tying cows, as it says. And so she was putting one rope onto another and, and just trying to tie it around Krishna. But every time she came to the end, it was always two inches too short. And Krishna was not exhibiting his universal form. He was the same size. <laughs> So, as this was going on, Mother Yasoda was simultaneously laughing and feeling frustrated at the same time. <laughs> Have you ever had that experience? <laughs> that something you're trying to do and you can't do it, but at the same time, you're laughing. <laughs> so, yeah. So she was feeling like that, mixed emotions. Finally, somebody came, and guess who that person was? Ra, little Radharani. She's a little girl. And she sees, oh, Mother Yasoda needs some help. So she had a, a little braid in her hair for tying her hair. She took the braid out gave it to Mother Yasoda, and Mother Yasoda put it at the end of the rope, and Krishna was tied up. Therefore, Shri Radha Damudar. That's where we, we get it. We don't say Yasoda Damudar, we say Radha Damudar. And this part of the pastime is mentioned by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He's the one that writes this commentary that Radharani appears and gave that little Top knot for tying up Krishna. There's where she see Radha Dhammadar. So if you go to Vrindavan, or even if you go to, uh, what is the name, Jaipur? The original Jaya, Radha Dhammadar deities are in Jaipur. Every day for the, during this month, they perform this pastime 
where Radharani is tying up Krishna. <laughs> and Radharani has a vine. It's just a, you know, like a vine from a tree. And she's holding it, and it's wrapped around Krishna. <laughs> like that. So then that way they exhibit this pastime, both in Vrindavan and in Jayapur, like that. So now uh, Krishna's tied up, and Mother Yasoda's thinking, now I can do my chores. <laughs> So she leaves. Should I stop there? So I'll continue tomorrow night with the rest of the pastime because it's also very interesting. There's much more to this Leela. Uh, and of course, there's so many little innuendos describing the loving mood of Krishna and his mother that really charms the heart when you read these stories. But one thing we should mention, and this is significant about the nature of God, because in order to practice Krishna consciousness, we should try to understand the nature of God. It's different, difficult to understand the nature of God. In fact, it's impossible to understand the nature of God. But we get a little indication that God is Swarat. Swarat means he's fully independent. He does what he wants when he wants or doesn't do anything even though he's supposed to do something. <laughs> In other words, he, no one controls God. But he always acts for everyone's best welfare, so therefore he's all good. But there's another element which really indicates a little bit about his nature, and that is that although he is independent, still he's controlled by love. And this is the essence of the Lord's uh, mood in his pastimes with his devotees. That you see, when Krishna, went, Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura to take care of Kamsa and then establish Ugrasena on the throne and then to fortify Mathura from the, all the other armies that were attacking Mathura after Kamsa was killed. Krishna was in anxiety because the, the residents of Vrindavan were wanting him to come back and Krishna wanted to come back also. But Krishna had this responsibility to make sure everything was going on nicely within the rule of Mathura and at the same time there were many demons such as Shalva, Jarasandha, Pundraka and many others that were harassing the devotees in different places. So Krishna had to make stay out of Vrindavan so he could arrange for all these demons to be killed. Kaliyavana was another one. So many demons were killed. But at the same time, the residents of Vrindavan were suffering tremendously because of the absence of Krishna. And Krishna was suffering equally, feeling their separation. So this mood that is exhibited in, in these pastimes is really interesting because Krishna is caught. He wants to be with the residents of Vrindavan because there's nothing like their love. And Krishna is the king of all lovers. But at the same time, he pravitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstapanarpaya kam sambhavami yuge yuge. He comes to reestablish saintly rule and destroy demoniac uh, personalities. So he had to do all that. There was no one else that he that could actually do it at that time. Although he was empowering Ugrasena and all his armies, still they were no match for all the demons. There were so many. Jarasandha had millions and millions of soldiers. Kaliyavana also. And Shalva, and so many, so many demoniac forces were all around and many of them were attacking uh, different places, especially Vrindavan. So Krishna was at the same time was trying to s protect the residents of Vrindavan and at the same time kill all the different demons. So his, his separation from, Krishna, from Vrindavan manifested in the form of what is the, the Sanskrit word is called sporti. Sporty means manifestation. That Krishna appeared in the hearts of his devotees 
as a manifestation of himself. They could see Krishna and feel his presence in their heart. But still, although he was there in that mood of separation, still they were in anxiety that he wasn't personally present. So there was like this contrary mood of feeling the presence of Krishna within themselves and at the same time wanting Krishna's personal presence in Vrindavan. So Krishna, he's struggling to finish up his business of killing all the demons <laughs> and uh, at the same time get back to Vrindavan as fast as he can. <laughs> And it was a big job because the demons were really in profuse numbers at that time. As it says, you die when, when the world was overburdened with demoniac forces, the Lord appeared in his form as Krishna. So those forces were there. Kamsa was the king, but once Kamsa was killed, Kamsa had many, many allies in the form of many other these demoniac soldiers, especially Jarasandha. And Krishna, would, when Krishna arranged to destroy the armies of Jarasandha, what he would do is that he, would, he wouldn't kill Jarasandha because Jarasandha had so many soldiers that he, they, he would take some of his armies to attack uh, Mathura and Krishna would kill all the, all the armies and leave Jarasandha without anybody else. And then Jarasandha would come back and get more armies and come. So that way Krishna could kill all his soldiers. <laughs> so he did that 17 times. <laughs> if he killed Jarasandha, there was no one else to bring the soldiers. So, <laughs> And Jarasandha, one time when he was, after he was defeated 17 times, he thought, I'm just going to go into the mountains and meditate. <laughs> But then some of his associates said, "What do you? What's this meditation? You, you know, you got to fight. Come on, your meditation won't do anything. Quit lamenting. Get back on the battlefield." <laughs> so that uh, that played itself out where Jarasandha, and finally he he, he employed Kaliyavana to help. Kaliyavana happened to be this untouchable king which actually was one son of a great soul. And Kaliyavana, that was a whole other story. Kaliyavana also had many, many soldiers and armies. But I will tell that story another time because that's a, that's a big story also. That's the story of Muchikunda. Okay, so this is a little bit about Dhammadharastika. I don't want to stay too late tonight because devotees have to go to sleep especially this guy who's sitting on his fiasa son. <laughs> so we've been, uh, uh, we've been, what we say, more in tune with early to bed and early to rise. <laughs> Makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise. We, have, we used to have another saying when I was a kid, early to bed and early to rise, and your girlfriend goes out with the other guys. <laughs> but that, that's not very transcendental, is it? <laughs> anyway, when you're young, you think of all these stupid things. <laughs> okay, so thank you. And then tomorrow we'll continue with Krishna being tied up and the pastime as it unfolds unfolds. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Dhammadarastakam ki jai, Radha Dhammadar ki jai. <laughs>